What a year 2019 has been for games, guys. With so many titles released this year, there was so much to go through. Also, new consoles on the horizon after the year. We have new games and features to look forward to. As with a lot of gamers, I couldn't play everything like Sekiro, Control, Pokemon Sword and Shield, and many others. But the games that did make the list, I think are worthy of your time as much as I've been So, that being said, The J Gamer Show presents Top 10 Best Games of 2019. But before we get to the list, I thought with many pros come the cons, as I wanted to give a shout out to three games I played this year that weren't terrible by all means, but still deserve a shout out. So, I would say to these three, better luck next time. Continuing on from two successful games to the reboot, the devs decided to drop the hardcore gun toting badass of William and instead give us a co op action thrill ride with his twin daughters Jesse and Sophia. While not terrible compared to their dad, they were just not the most interesting characters to play. Plus, with the addition of co op, it loses its badass loner motor and instead opts for one liners in every kill you make. When the obvious third game is announced, let's hope we get the true return of William. Because let's face it, a gun-toting senior citizen killing Nazis left and right just looks pretty awesome. Rage 2. This one was a pretty late entry for me as I kind of forgot there was even a first game. Although being a fun ride through the barren wasteland and shooting up bandits, gang lords, and other crazies would be fun, this was in fairness pretty boring. Don't get me wrong, the opening was all over the place, explosive action, fun. But after that, the game begins. Going here and there to find excitement, but then at times having to breathe can be pretty slow. In conclusion, at least it was better than the first. Jump Force. This one makes me sad how much of a letdown it really was, because I'm a huge fan of most of these franchises. From Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, Bleach, and even Death Note, you would think this would be the craziest crossover fighting game ever since Marvel vs. Capcom. And yet, what we got seemed to be a game still in its beta, as while it was awesome to see these characters do their thing in battle, the rest of the game just feels like you're watching the stiffness of your old action figures. While at times you could have a blast watching your favorite fighters go at it, this was indeed just a rental at best. So, with the yang out of the way, let's get to the yin. Number 10. Mankind had its chance to rule Avengers. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, The Black Order. We start this list off with a good one. Years waiting for a follow up and then once you see that Iron Man mask flip, it's finally happening. Although becoming an exclusive to the Switch limiting its hardware capabilities, this was still a great addition to the RPG elements of the series. With the long-running success of the MCU, we got new additions such as the Guardians, Captain Marvel, Spider-Gwen, the Punisher, and after horribly being skipped over, the return of the X-Men. With a large it. cast Keep of characters fighting. including heroes and villains, a cinematic storyline, and ever-changing powers, this was an interesting return to the series. If we want to survive this, we do it as a team. Number 9 Bloodstained Ritual of the Night If you were pissed at the fact Konami decided to, well, piss all over their beloved franchises, this game had you covered in those troubling times. Harking back to the good old days of Metroidvania style gameplay, Bloodstained was filled with all the gothic evolving gameplay you remember from the 80s and 90s eras. From the different playstyles depending on weapons and accessories, this was a game where you would be able to sink hours into. Also with a familiar soundtrack that once again reminds you of a certain time, Bloodstained was a true nostalgia gem for years to come. Number 8 
Borderlands 3. Ah, Gearbox, what happened to you, buddy? Battleborn, and especially Alien Colonial Marines, were huge missed opportunities for you. Thankfully, you were able to return to a place where everything made sense, and with the addition of 1 million guns and counting, is always the way to go. Years waiting was worth it as we got a psychotic fun adventure that never knew when to take it easy. Exploring planet after planet never gets stalled as there's always something waiting to blow you away, or even vice versa. This was indeed a true return to the cooperative mayhem. Number 7 Luigi's Mansion 3. This being the third game in the series, you'd think Luigi would be watching his back more. But good thing he hasn't, as Luigi's third outing into the paranormal is still a blast to play through. From the mansions of the original titles to the larger-than-life penthouse, it was a never-ending hilarity of fun and eeriness as you explored floor after floor of creepy ghouls and specters who always had a trick up their ghostly tale. With the return of his signature ghost back, along with new abilities such as the Guiji, the Plunger Launcher, and of course, slamming the ever lavish yeah. out of ghosts, Luigi and the player were up to the task of this hilarious and fun ghostly adventure. Their fate rests in your hands. Number 6 Together you can help us reconnect. You can make America whole. Nah, America's finished. Sam, if we don't all come together again, humanity will not survive. We don't need a country. Not anymore. We do. Alone, we have no future. Bridget, you're the president of Jack shit. Death Stranding. Being at number 6, I may get some heat for this one, but I still won't deny this was a title that had so much hype behind it and it was able to pay off as he continued. After all that happened to him, Kojima was ready to bounce back. Unlike most of his past titles that jump you right into the story, Death Stranding takes its time to bring you into this ever-changing world. As Sam, played by Walking Dead's Norman Reedus, we spend most of the time walking the vast and large world map, while indeed a very slow start, once you finally get yourself in the middle of it, the world began to get larger to me as I met new faces, some good, some bad, and some I didn't know if I could trust. Also new skills and accessories felt rewarding as I continued my journey throughout what was left of America and tried to build something better. Death Stranding was indeed a long road to the end, but felt like I accomplished more than I thought, and I look forward to seeing what Kojima and his team develop in the future. America isn't going to get rid of the BTs. As long as they're still around, there's no escaping it. But at least we'll have hope. Number five Mortal Kombat Eleven. So where do you take a franchise that has spanned over three decades of gortastic fighting in a long ass story? Introduce time travel into the mix. Continuing on from the reboot of MK11, we find our heroes still at war with their former comrades until Kronika, mistress of time and everything, decides to BAM! Try and reboot everything. Again. Bringing characters from the past to meet their future selves and at times beat each other's heads in, we have another long cast of characters from the newbies we met from MKX to familiar faces like Liu Kang, Sub-Zero, Raiden, Scorpion, Katana, and so on. As well as returning characters such as Scarlet, Shao Kahn, Jade, Baraka, Frost, and many others. Also not forgetting the addition of new interesting fighters such as the Collector and Garrus. Finally, there were new ways to tear your opponent's face, head, arms, and everything else apart. 
With almost 30 years of content, it seems like NetherRealm are not ready to end this bloody as hell franchise anytime soon. Number 4 They can take your world. They can take your heart. Cut you loose from all you know. But if it's your fate, then every step forward will always be a step closer to home. Kingdom Hearts 3. It was 2005 when we got Kingdom Hearts 2. And then we got Coded, 358 Days Over 2, Birth by Sleep, and Dream Drop Distance. But yeah, no third game. Finally, 14 years later, 14 years later, we finally got Kingdom Hearts 3. Some could say waiting that long for a certain follow-up would kill the hype. So when the highly anticipated sequel finally comes out, no one will bat an eye. Luckily, that wasn't the case when Kingdom Hearts 3 finally released. What we were treated to was once again an evolving franchise of familiar faces across many Disney worlds such as Toy Story, Frozen, Tangled, and many more. With added features such as incorporating popular Disney rides into environment attacks, as well as changing keyblades to increase crazy combos. Also having all your favorite Disney characters join your party was also a fun treat. Now no one has to sit on the sidelines. Even though it seemed like Final oh, yeah. Fantasy characters were pushed to the side, we still got a fun and emotional adventure that explores decades of Disney lore. With all the new purchases Disney has made over the last decade or so, there's no telling where Sora and his friends will end up, or who they will encounter. Sora! Sora, you don't believe that. I know you don't. Number 3 The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening Being one of the millions of hardcore Zelda fanboys in the world, I never truly had the chance to play this huge pocket-sized adventure back in 1993. Then I saw this. Flashback. Oh! Oh my god! Yes! Link's Awakening? Oh my god. Oh my god! Are you kidding me? Oh my god! Am I seeing this right? End of flashback. And then I finally got my chance and what a colorful and often adorable makeover it was. Essentially the same game we got back then. It was indeed the right move to dig up this classic and shed some new light as we saw Link once again, journey across caves, dungeons, mountains, castles, and more to uncover the mystery of Kohalint Island. Not only armed with his usual sword and shield, but a collection of other tools to traverse the land, such as the magical rod, powerful bracelet, and honestly, what I think is the first appearance of the hookshot, a tool that will return in future titles. From the pocket black and green graphics to the giant colorful world of 4K, this was just a reimagine a classic title like this needed. Number 2 Alright, time to kick some ass. Devil May Cry 5 Well, I can't talk about this one without showing this. Flashback.
What the? End of flashback. Yeah, not one of my finest moments being a huge DMC fan. But luckily, Karma was not in my future, as this was still one of the best action games I have ever played. Continuing on from 4, the presentation in 5 was indeed why we loved Devil May Cry in the first place. The sword and gunplay, the over-the-top action, the cast of familiar characters including our pizza-loving devil slaying badass protagonist Dante. You know, the real Dante instead of that one. And we also had Nero, Trish, Lady, and newcomer, the mysterious V. Also, we can't forget that hard-hitting soundtrack. God damn! Huh? Oh, sorry, I, I got lost in Devil Trigger there for a second. There's no doubt Capcom were on a slump for a while, and this was truly one of two franchise entries that secured them as one of the best. Jackpot. Number one. Resident Evil 2. Jesus Christ. And here we are folks, what I truly believe is the best game I've played this year. Although a remake, there hasn't been a game I have had more focus and attention on all year long. Returning to its true survival horror roots while at last perfecting its modern day controls, it was indeed a true faithfulness to the horror classic. Coming back to Raccoon City in 1998, we have the return of Leon on his first and worst day as a cop. And then there's Claire coming into town looking for her lost brother, but instead has to go through her worst day ever. These will indeed be events they will never forget. Around every corner we have zombie after zombie, and if not, there's always something worse to looking around. Whether it be zombies, liquors, or god forbid, the heavy stomping sounds of Mr. X nearby, you were always on edge for what was going to come at you. Then there's the survival horror aspect of the game, where every bullet must count as you both shoot or evade dangers to escape a city of the dead with your lives. Beating the game, however, is not the end of it, as afterwards you have a brand new point of view to survive, even more horrifying than the first. Some could say that a remake cannot capture the same magic that the original ever could, but that's not in Resident Evil 2's take, as this actually succeeds everything that the original had and more. As with Devil May Cry 5, this has indeed been Capcom's best year yet, and with the upcoming remake of Resident Evil 3 to follow in 2020, this roller coaster of awesome will not end. For newcomers as well as veterans of the franchise, this was a game not to be missed, and that is why Resident Evil 2 is my most favorite game of 2019. Trust me. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this list, and hey, if you didn't see your favorite game on the list, I hope you let me know what you enjoyed last year in the comments below. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. With the release of new consoles, there's no telling what we could get in 2020. Until then, I'm Jade Gamer, and that's the whole damn show.